Welcome to my guide on Diamond Weapon Extreme. At the time of uploading, this is still launch week, so people are still learning. So please don't use this video as some form of forced learning, or an excuse to force people to quote-unquote get good. People learn at their own pace and their own ways, and I'm always one for blind prog when possible. This fight, meanwhile, is mostly similar to normal mode with a few changes and a couple of new tricks and a faster pace. If you need extra practice to see how mechanics work, normal mode will serve as a safe option. One specific new mechanic later, though, seems to be the tripping point for most people. That aside, some mechanics have multiple ways to solve them, but I will be going with strats that are consistent for a pug environment and seem to be common in party finders. So let's get right into it. Before even starting the fight, you will need two light parties. A light party consists of one tank, one healer, and two DPS. This group will be your light party for the entire fight. The team that stays to the left is Team A, and the team that is on the right is Team B. Also know that, in normal mode, you could basically use teleports as much as you wanted to. Now there is a lengthy 20 second cooldown. You must teleport only at the required times and as soon as possible. And a little note about our markers. You cannot place markers on the other side of the ship without first clearing or getting markers from someone else. Immediately after starting the fight, G Savior 2 will show up and activate the teleporters. You will have a few moments before the boss begins to cast Diamond Rain. An orb will appear on the platform and explode, one per player. This attack is why we need to split into groups. Team B needs to swap over to their platform before the cast completes in order to split the orbs, four per platform, each giving you a stack of vulnerability up. Up to four stacks, this doesn't hurt much at all. If you get five stacks, this will nearly kill a player from full health, and six stacks is instant death except for possibly tanks. Be sure your entire light party is on the ball with swapping places every time it's needed. Soon after Diamond Rain, the boss will begin to auto-attack the top two enmity targets. This does not necessarily mean tanks. For this reason, both tanks should keep enmity stance on for the entire phase. These are thin beams that also cleave the people in the path of the laser. Be sure the tanks stay a slight bit away from the rest of the group, as to not cleave them with the attacks. Next up we have Adamant Purge. This has three forms in this first phase, which he will cycle through in one of two orders. Every Adamant Purge will come with the use of Ruby Weapon Claws. You can see which side these claws are by looking at the hands. The flames will be firing out to show the claw. To dodge this, the team on the side the claw appears must teleport to the other side before the countdown completes. In addition to the claw, this first adamant purge can be one of two different attacks denoted by text and an animation. One option is Emerald Weapon. He will announce this and open his shoulder blades. Keep note of the animation for later. Emerald Weapon's attack, meanwhile, signifies a spread mark. All eight players will be hit with a heavy AoE with a small radius. Spread out and you should be okay. Players already on the safe platform should pre-position to give room for the players teleporting over. There is more than enough room on the platform for everyone, so don't panic. The other option is to use the Sapphire weapon. This is shown on the boss with a giant cannon charging in the front of the boss's chest. For Sapphire Weapon, you must stack together. Everyone should move toward the middle section of the ship that is safe and be prepared for the laser. It hits for about the same amount of damage as the Emerald Weapon if everyone is stacked together. But, of course, if there are less people in the stack, it will do more. No matter which mechanic you get though, 
the team that started with the safe side should now move on to the other side to prepare for future mechanics. This swap should occur with every single adamant purge for consistency. One team teleports over to dodge the ruby claw. Everyone stacks or spread depending on if sapphire or emerald. And then the other team will teleport over back to where the ruby claw was. Team A should now be on the east ship and team B on the west ship. And again, this will happen with every single adamant purge. The boss will get in two more auto attacks before moving into Photon Burst. This will happen many times throughout the fight. This targets the top two aggro targets just like the auto attacks. These are GA100 style markers that deal very heavy damage to the target and radiate damage to the entire raid. The amount of damage is based on proximity. The further away you get, the less damage it will do to you. Have both tanks stand as far north as they can while the rest of the party runs south. As long as you are at least half the length of the ship or more away from the tank on your side of the arena, you should survive with plenty of room to spare. Have the tanks use decent mitigations and be ready to heal them up before the next auto attacks hits. A few auto attacks later we will get to the second adamant purge. This one will always be solely the ruby weapon claw. There will not be a second mechanic to deal with, but you still must swap party positions just like the first. Immediately after the ruby claw resolves, swap back over to that side of the arena. Team A should now be backed west to where they began and Team B should be back east where they began the fight. You have about 5 seconds to cross over before the boss will begin to cast Diamond Rain for the second time. So long as you get used to swapping for every single Adamant Purge, this should cause no problems. A few more auto attacks later, he will begin to use Adamant Purge for the third time. This will be the opposite of the first Adamant Purge. So if Adamant Purge 1 was Sapphire Weapon, Adamant Purge 3 will be Emerald Weapon, and vice versa. Handle this the same way as before. If it's Emerald, be sure to spread after getting onto the correct platform. If it's Sapphire, stack together. However, there is no actual need to swap positions for this one. You can all stay on the same platform except for the tanks. After a few more auto attacks, the boss will cast Photon Burst. One tank per boat just like normal, and this will be the end of the first phase. A few more auto attacks will go out, and the boss will begin to transition into phase 2 with Code CXS. He will become untargetable for the duration of the transition, and be sure not to accidentally step on a teleporter while this next mechanic happens. After transforming, Ifritbot will send out 8 articulated bits, 4 per platform, that will tether to random targets. These tethers are distance based, and they do not cleave so you may stack together with no issues. The goal of this transition is to get to the opposite side of the bit you are tethered to without using the teleporters. There are two situations you can be in. You can either start on the opposite side of your bit, or be on the same side as your bit. At the same time, the boss will be casting All Recyclone. This shockwave attack will send you flying through the air, and there will be one per boat. To survive this, you must get close to your boat cyclone and use that to reach your desired destination. Run toward the cyclone and either aim to be launched toward the other end of your boat or to the other boat. You will be flung far enough away to reach the other side. The bits will immediately fire as everyone lands and so long as you are on the opposite boat, it will do very little damage. After landing, run towards the teleporter but do not step on them yet. The boss will then cast Airship's Bane on one of the two boats 
randomly. If your boat turns orange with the AoE marker, immediately teleport to the other side. If your boat remains untargeted, stay put, you are safe. The boss will then jump onto the surviving boat and begin Phase 2 immediately. Phase 2 is based around extremely short burst phases before becoming untargetable. He also has positionals for the duration of this phase, so tanks and melee beware. The boss will begin Phase 2 with back-to-back -back raid wide damage, Outrage. This does heavy enough damage to need mitigation or minor healing between each to survive. Immediately after the second outburst, the boss will jump to the direct middle of the boat regardless of previous positioning and begin to cast Auri Arts. He will face a diagonal direction and begin to dash repeatedly, causing damage as he moves. This attack is the exact same as in normal mode, but without the AoE indicators. To find the safe spots, employ what I call the butt strat. The boss will be at a slight angle, but if you go to the butt of the boss, you will be next to a triangular shaped trapezoid at the middle of the boat's length. Regardless of which direction he is facing, this spot is safe, but you must be at his butt. If you are at the front of the boss, you must instead move to be in line with the teleporter on the side he is not already facing. If he is facing north, and toward the east, move south in line with the teleporter on the east side. Be sure to know both safe spots, but there's first time no matter what, you can use the butt side. After he diagonal dashes past, run toward the middle line of the boat, and look at the floating orb in the air. The boss will jump to it and randomly face north or south. There are more orbs off the edge in these locations, separating the boat into east and west. The orb he is facing indicates which side is unsafe. Face north or south and compare the orb to the boss's direction. If the boss is looking at the orb you see, get out of the way of that orb. If the boss is facing away from the orb you are looking at, that orb side is safe. You have only 3 seconds to move to the safe spot, which is why we run to the middle, so only a step or two will keep us safe. When he is ready, he will jump to the orb and then dash back across the arena, knocking back anyone who gets hit by him. The boss will return, and this form of Auri Arts will always be followed up with an outrage, followed by Auri Doomstead. This is an AoE tank buster that forces a tank swap. Anyone caught in the AoE will be given physical vulnerability up, causing all auto attacks to become instant kills. Do not stand on the main tank during this. Be sure to have them use heavy cooldowns and swap the moment the attack finishes. After ensuring the tanks did their swap, the boss will leap away again without a cast bar for another type of Ari Arts which in itself comes in two flavors. Regardless of the flavor, an orb will be placed in the middle of the boat off to the side. The distinguishing factor is whether there is one or two orbs placed north and south. If there is only one orb, the boss will jump off the orb he is on to the opposite side of the boat. His landing creates a huge circular AoE that takes up more than half of the arena. Run toward the side he starts on to avoid the landing, then run towards him. If hit, you will be knocked back and most likely thrown off the boat entirely. If there are two orbs, one north and one south, you must run to the edges of the arena and to the opposite side of where he starts. Before jumping, he will dash across the middle of the arena to land on the other orb. After landing on the second orb, he will jump back across the arena onto the ground, landing with the same circular AoE that occurs with only one orb in play. After landing, he will become targetable again. 
Run toward the orb in the middle of the boat using the small beam it radiates downward. Place yourself next to the beam in a way that you are between the beam and the corner of the arena is at your back. Specifically the corners on the opposite side of the orb. The boss will then jump to this final orb and come straight down with a knockback that sends you pretty far. As long as your aim is true and you get knocked to the correct corners, you should be fine, there is some leeway. If you have any gap closes, this is a good place to use it. But do not use your knockback prevention here, we want that in a bit. After resolving Ari Arts, the boss will use Outrage one more time again before starting the next mechanic. To start, the boss will summon Articulated Bits. Rather than tethers like the ones from the phase transition, these perform AoEs in a straight line. They're also rather thick, larger than the bits themselves. Position yourselves on the side of the arena these are not on, as the boss jumps mid and casts Auri Arts like the first time. Employ butt strats if possible, but this is not always possible because sometimes the side his butt is on is the side with the bits are on. If so, move to be in line with the teleporter pad to the side he is not starting the dashes towards. If his first dash will be towards the north, go south. If his first dash is south, run north to the teleporter pad or in line with it. Perform the same motion as before. After he dashes past, run to the middle line of the boat and prepare to dodge to the side the final orb is not on. However, this time you must also align yourself vertically to dodge bits on the side. The window is just as tight as before, but now with two things to dodge. Check which orb is to the north or south compared to the boss, then quickly swivel the camera to dodge the bits. You must be directly between the bits in the exact middle. The beams are just that large that if you are not directly in the middle between them, you are likely to be clipped. Once again, after this version of Ari Arts, the boss will jump down, use Outrage, then force a tank swap with Ari Doomstead. Heavy mitigation and make sure to get off to provoke just like normal. He will then do one final Ari Arts. He will once again summon bits to cleave half of the arena and summon two to three orbs. The number of orbs this time around will always be the opposite of the first time. If the first time had only one orb in the north and south, the second time will have both orbs. Perform this mechanic the same way, but limited to only half the boat due to the bits. After landing, the bits will move to cleave the entirety of either the north or south of the arena, making it that you can only be knocked back into one corner for safety. Which side the bits go to is entirely random. They can start on the south and move all the way to the north if they so wish. This is where we want to use sure cast and arm's length, if anywhere, to negate this knockback. Immediately after the boss lands and becomes targetable, use your knockback mitigation and get to the safe side, north or south. If you do not have it, aim yourself into the singular safe corner. If you end up going to the corner where the bits are, you are likely to be hit by two bits and instantly die, even if you get knocked to the corner. This final mechanic marks the end of Phase 2. The boss will use Outrage one last time before announcing the end of the phase. He will jump away and become untargetable, and the other boat will return. Do not go over when the teleporters activate. Stay on the boat you are on and prepare for the beginning of Phase 3, and the hardest mechanic of the fight. Slightly spread out while waiting for the boss to come back to targetable. Make sure the tanks are to the north or south to avoid cleaving the party like normal. The boss will do two auto attacks. And then the mechanic will begin. Welcome to Flood Ray. Here forward called Limit Cut. Let's break it down. 
Randomly, the entire party will be assigned with numbers 1 through 8, which signify the order of the attacks going out. And these attacks are huge. Even when hiding in the near corners, the AoEs will hit nearly half of the arena of the side you are on. These do decent damage and give a magic vulnerability up, ensuring you cannot take more than one hit. To solve this mechanic in a safe way, you must separate into two groups based on your number, evens and odds. This is where the number markers come into play and the colors of the boats. The western boat is where odds will go and the eastern boat is where evens will go. This correlates with the numbers as odd numbers are always blue and the western boat is blue. Even numbers are always red, and the eastern boat is red. But also keep in mind which boat you begin this mechanic on is random based purely on the phase 2 transition. Some groups have it that evens will always be the ones to cross over, but for consistency and for a later mechanic, we have static positions. Odds left, evens to the right. And because it's hard to see all that is going on in video form, let's move over to my rudimentary graph with pink skills, or lack of. The eight players will randomly be assigned numbers. Odd numbers head over to the blue boat, and red numbers head over to the red boat. While on the proper boat, you must spread out properly. One, two, five, and six all will be going to the north, 3, 4, 7, and 8 all go south. But as mentioned, you can't all go to the spots because you can only take one AoE. So to start, 1 through 4 will all take position at their markers, while 5 through 8 wait in the middle of their boat. When the cast bar ends, they will begin to fire off immediately. When 1 fires off, 1 and 5 will swap spots. When 2 goes off, 2 and 6 will swap spots. When 3 goes off, 3 and 7 will swap spots. 4 goes off, 4 and 8 swap spots. Then let 5 through 8 go off and the mechanic is solved. Now let's see this in action with the full video clip. And a little bit of good news, if someone is dead before the numbers go out, and they do not get a number, they will just be entirely ignored and you won't even see the full 8 lasers. If 6 people are alive going into Limit Cut, there will only be 6 lasers going out. And you can raise them during the mechanic for no penalty. While the Limit Cuts may be over, you are not done with the mechanic. Due to the random nature of Limit Cuts, you may have two healers on the same side or such. At this point, return to your original light parties from the very start of the fight. If you are group A, go to the west boat, and group B, go to the east boat. This is to prepare for future mechanics. You have a little bit of time, but do get onto your proper light party groups as soon as possible. This especially applies to the tanks because the first mechanic after Flood Ray is another Photon Burst. Handle this the same as before and then the auto attacks will resume. For the rest of the fight, every mechanic that is not Limit Cut shall be accompanied with Articulated Bits. And they work the same way for every mechanic. On one boat, the northern half of the boat will be cleaved, and the other boat, the southern half, move to the safe side of the boat as he casts Adamant Purge for the first set. This will once again be a random mechanic between Emerald Weapon Spread or Sapphire Weapon Stack, but without the callout from the boss. You must use the boss's animation. Check for the Ruby Weapon Claw, then check for if the shoulder cannons or the chest cannon are lit up. 
Wait for the bits to all fire before teleporting to the other side of the arena, away from the Ruby Claw. As you teleport, the bits will now move. They will now cleave across the entire length of the boat, but with gaps between them. Do your spread or stack as necessary, but also be sure not to be in line with one of the bits. Taking both the mechanic from the weapon and a bit line AoE will almost definitely kill you. Then have the other group swap across to the other side as normal, as Diamond Rain will be coming out next. Be ready for the boss to cleave the tanks a few more times, then prepare for it to summon more articulated bits. These work exactly the same as I said, but we will handle the first set of bits differently, as this is a different mechanic, but it will only happen this one time. When the bits spawn, run to the side of the boat that the bits are going to fire at. As you run over, the boss will begin to cast Diamond Shrapnel on everybody. These markers mean they will chase you. Run to the corner away from the boss, and as the cast finishes, the first puddles will drop at the edge of the boat. Immediately run into the teleporters before the bits fire and move to the other side. The explosions will fire off four times and chase you across the boats. But they won't reach you as long as you move to the middle of the boat as they start to go out. The bits will then move to the pattern with gaps between them, and a set of four media puddles will appear on both sides of the boat, assuming all players are alive. If some players die before the puddles go out, not all eight puddles will spawn, just like with Limit Cut, with people not being alive before Limit Cut begins. Most groups just wing this part from what I have experienced, but you may wish to talk with your light party to choose specific puddle positioning. For example, tank DPS DPS healer running north to south. Spread out across the boat you teleported to, but do not immediately walk into your media puddle. Check to make sure that there is no bit in front of it. The bits will fire off before the puddles resolve, so do not run immediately in. After the bits fire off, you are safe to go stand into each of the puddles. And as long as every media has someone in the puddle, it will do very little to no damage. The exact moment the medias resolve, Photon Burst will begin to cast. The tank should run to the nearest corner, rather than trying to readjust to north if they ended up taking a southern puddle. Here, the tank is already south, so stay south. Minimal movement, and much safer than trying to run across the entire arena. From this point forth, mechanics will just repeat. There will be another set of bits, along with a sapphire or emerald adamant purge. Be sure to swap sides like with every single other adamant purge for the diamond rain right after. If you do not cross over before diamond rain, do not cross over afterwards. This is critical. Do it immediately or not at all. That is, assuming you survive a failure to cross over. Ten seconds after this diamond rain, the boss will begin to channel limit cuts again. Provided you crossed over when you were supposed to, there will be plenty of time to handle this set of limit cuts the exact same as the first time. If you were slow, it may be a tight squeeze. Remember, odds west, evens to the right, 1, 2 north, 3, 4 south. You are likely clearing before this second limit cut ever comes out, but this alone is why you would want to take the static spots, rather than have evens cross or odds cross. It should be dead by now, but not everything always goes to plan. After the eighth limit cut, return to your original light party groups for the final time. This will be followed up, just like last time, with a set of photon bursts into one final adamant purge with bits. 
swap sides like normal to handle a final set of diamond rains after the adamant purge is over. After a few more auto attacks, Flood Ray will begin to cast for the third time, but this is the Enrage cast. All players alive will be targeted at the same time for an Enrage timer just under 12 minutes. Congratulations once you clear, and was this guide helpful to you? Is there anything I could do better for potential future extreme guides? Let me know below, and if you need it, I have down below in the description the full unedited run from beginning all the way up to Enrage. And a unique thanks to all the people who helped me out to see Enrage. Getting to Enrage is harder than it sounds, especially once people start clearing. Thank you for watching, and may the power of Anna Nidhogg's lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Amen Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfi, Scott Stanley, Valor LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. If you'd like to join my Patreon or my Discord or anything like that, the links are down below. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.